Hey, welcome everyone. This is Ned from Caspio. Welcome to our Caspio Labs episode. Good to see many of you come back. Let me know if you can hear me okay. If you can, we can go ahead and begin today's class. So just give me a thumbs up that you can hear me. And we will commence with today's live stream. Just going to wait for your confirmation if you can. Hey, Didier, welcome back. Happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, I do want to mention a couple of things before I begin today's live stream. Tracy, if you're here, I know I promised you um, document generation today, but I had to pivot for today's class because there's still some pending things that we need to resolve with the issue, uh, with the, uh, with the release. And until that's done, I've been told to hold off and postpone the document generation, I think for two weeks. Uh, so I think we're going to have it on the 25th. And I told him that I will do it on the 25th no matter what. So um, just keep in mind that I apologize. I just had to uh, come up with something quickly for today's live stream. Something a little bit different. Uh, but we will do the uh, document generation on the 25th. Okay. What a bummer. Yeah, I'm bummed too. But it is what it is. I had to... Uh, pivot and do something else for today's class. Still an interesting topic for those who haven't had a chance to uh, learn how to use iframe deployment. Today we're going to learn how to do that and how we can use that iframe deploy code inside an HTML block if you're using direct links. Now one more thing that I wanted to mention today, uh, somebody asked me if I knew of any Caspian nerdy jokes. Uh, I forgot who asked me that question last week. Personally, I don't know of any, and I've asked a couple of people at Caspio, and nobody knows any nerdy Caspio jokes, but one that comes to mind for me that's pretty funny is that my buddies will periodically text me and ask me, hey, what's Casio doing to compete with the iWatch in the latest update, which is pretty funny. If you look at the name Caspio, it's very similar to Casio. So <laughs> that's funny to me. I mean, they like to poke fun at that. Uh, because the name is similar, and uh, they always say that to me every once in a while when the iWatch comes up with a new iP uh, new update. But that's the only joke that I know when it comes to the Caspio name, but nerdy Caspio jokes, I don't know of any. I'll try to think of some if I can, but uh, yeah, that's as far as my humor goes when it comes to Caspio. All right, let me know if you have any questions before I begin. As the title states, today we're going to learn how to embed a data page within a data page using an iframe deployment method inside an HTML block. I know it sounds overly technical, but I promise it's not. And if I don't get any questions to come my way, we're going to go ahead and begin. So what I'm doing is, yeah, Casio versus Caspio, yeah. That's pretty funny. I used to have a Casio watch when I was younger. Um, all right, so let's take a look at my live example today. So I have a list of projects. I only have two projects in today's use case. And then when I click on the link to view project details, let's say for low code blog, we can see the project details and I can also see a task that's linked to that project. Let me go back and show you my second project that I have, redesign home page, you will see three tasks that belong to that project. Believe it or not, this is all within one data page. Okay, so we have two data pages here that are residing inside one data page. And what I'm doing is using an HTML block and an iframe deployment to display my related data. Very helpful, especially for those who are using direct links and wish to use multiple data pages embedded in a single direct link. There is a there is a way to bypass that if you're not using the embed, and, uh, embed deployment method. So let's see how we can do that in Caspio. So we'll go to tables. I'll show you my tables first. I have two tables, very standard. We have a projects table with a project ID, which is a unique key. And then we have all the related project information. And then I have a task table that has a task ID and a project ID so that we can relate our tasks back to our projects. And inside this table, we have four different tasks that are linking back to our projects. So then under data pages, we have three data pages. I have a list of my projects. I'm going to click edit. 
I'm using a tabular format based on my projects table because I need to display my projects. This is all standard. I'm using a green style English localization. We have a search form. Okay, we have the results page. And in the results page inside the HTML block, all very standard. If you guys have passed parameters before, this is no different. We have the title of our link. We have the direct link. So when I click on that text, I want to pass the project ID. And this is going to take me to the details page of my project. And that is this data page up here. So when you click on the link here, it's taking me to this data page. And in the midst of going to that data page, it's also passing the project ID. So now let's take a look at this data page very quickly. We're going to hit edit. It's a details data page based on the projects table. We're going to filter the results based on the project ID. And all we need to do here is receive the project ID externally. Okay, so we pass the project ID in the URL. And then the details page is simply just receiving that ID so that we know which project to display based on the ID that we passed in the URL. Okay, now how do I display my tasks? Let's click next, next. And this is just a simple link that goes back to the previous page. So there's nothing special happening here. If I view the source, you will see that when I click on that text, which is up here, it just redirects me back to my results page. Now inside this HTML block at the bottom, you will notice we have an iframe. And inside that iframe, I'm using another direct link. Okay. And this direct link is actually pointing to my tasks data page that's displaying the tasks. Now, before I go into detail with the iframe, let me cancel. And notice that I have my data page that displays all the tasks. So if I click edit, that's going to be based off a of task table. We also need to receive the project ID, okay, as a parameter, because that's how we're going to know who to filter out the task for, for what project. Here we have the advanced tab. We receive the value externally, PID, all standard. All we're doing is passing and receiving the project ID. And then we can choose what information we want to display in the task. Okay, this is all the task information from the table. And then what I did was grab the deploy code. And instead of using the embed deployment method, which you cannot use the embed deployment method inside the HTML block, you can use the iframe, however. So I grabbed this iframe code copied it and then in the details page here inside the html block i paste my code to that report and then i use some inline css to adjust the height the width no scrolling frame border is zero and then you can remove this text if you want to um, but if the browser doesn't support the iframe you're going to get this text to display to let the end user know but if you're using Firefox, if you're using Chrome, you shouldn't have that issue. Okay, and then you click finish. And that's how we're able to get that results page to appear that displays all the tasks. You pass the ID, the task is receiving that ID, and it's displaying the tasks that belong to that specific project ID. Now you could also embed multiple data pages inside that details page. If you wanted to have a submission form to create the task, you can do that as well. Okay, you just grab another iframe and you can use that iframe inside that HTML block. So you could essentially have multiple data pages embedded inside that HTML block. Okay, I'm not gonna connect it, but let me show you very quickly what I'm talking about. Let's say you wanted to create a task, yeah? So we build a submission form. We can say task table, create a task. Uh, let's go with the green style. Let's go with the English localization. Hit next. Uh, we need all of our fields inside this um, form, including the project ID, so that we can stamp that in the task table. So the project ID is already being received in the URL. So all we need to do here is receive the value externally as PID. That is my parameter name. And in the standard tab, we're going to hide that field. Simple. 
And then you have all of your other task related fields. You can have task title, task description can be a text area. You can make your fields required if you want to. Let's just hit next. And you can say your submission was successful or you can have the form reload if you wanted to. You click finish. And now you grab your iframe. Same as before, copy that. Go back into your project details. And let's go back to our HTML block. And maybe right above, we can pay, paste another iframe here. Now I could copy the information that I have from my inline CSS because by default, it's not going to be a long or a big box. It, we're gonna have to scroll up and down to view the entire form. So I'm just going to copy and paste what I did before. And I don't think I'm gonna need this much for my height. I may need maybe 600 pixels, we'll see. I'll keep the width the same. I may have to come back here and just modify my width and height until I have my desired um, content placed the way I want to. So let's try and see what that looks like. Okay, so there's my form. I can continue to adjust my height. Right now it's 600 pixels, but I could narrow the gap here a little bit more if I wanted to. Now I can submit that form and you can see how we have multiple data pages using a direct single direct link up here at the top and inside that HTML block we have multiple data pages using the iframe. Um, very helpful, especially if you're using direct links, this is something that you should know. Uh, if you're building a quick application and you're not using the embed deployment method, you can still get away with it. You can bypass that by using an iframe deployment method. Okay, so today's class is very short. Uh, I don't know when you joined us, Tracy. I did mention at the beginning uh, about document generation. I apologized uh, at the very beginning of today's live stream, letting you know that we're going to do it on the 25th, only because we hit some roadblocks with the release, and I've been told to postpone this session for two more weeks. So my hands are tied. Um, I had nothing to do with that. I was just told to hold off on that uh, for another two weeks. But we will do it on the 25th. That much, I promise you. Okay. Has anyone actually tried to use the iframe deployment inside an HTML block? Or are you, are you seeing this for the very first time? Has anyone actually tried to implement something like this in their applications? Now, I could continue making this look nicer. Of course, I could narrow the gap here. I can make things look very, very nice to the point where you don't actually know that you're using a direct link. When we use the embed deployment method, it looks a lot nicer, obviously, because we have our navigation menu, we have our logo, we have our container that comes with the web page, and then we can organize our data pages a little bit cleaner. But that's not to say that we can't do it using this method as well. It just takes a little bit more um, poking around with the HTML and CSS to get it to work. First time? Okay, good. Yeah, just if you want to use this method, you can. Especially if you don't have a website because people want to be able to show related data from other tables in a single view. And this is one approach, but you can also use the embed deployment method if you'd like. I've shown a few examples of that in the past. So if we look at my CLCRM demo, and if I log in as Corey, who happens to be my sample user for the use case, and we see a list of customers, we go to details. Okay, it's the same idea. Okay, so this is my web template. I have my details page, okay? I have my list of logs and I have my list of deals. But it's the same exact thing as here. We're displaying information from other tables. So this is the data from my sales table and this is the data from my logs table. And here is the details. In my example here, we have the project details and I'm displaying data from my task table. I can also display data from other table if I wanted to, okay? All right, so again, very short class today. I hope you enjoyed it. It's not overly complicated as long as you're following the video 
I will make this application available for download as I always do in the description of the video. Just give me a few hours, I'll make it available. You guys can download it, import it into your account, and you can see exactly what I did. Okay, so it will be available sometime in the afternoon. If you go to the YouTube video description, there will be a link there to download the entire application that we looked at today. Okay, and then you can import it to your account by going to tools, clicking on import, and then you can see exactly what I did. And on the home page, you're going to be able to see the title of the application is iframe embed direct link. That's what I called it. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. It was nice to see you again, Tracy and King Capo and Didier. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, Tobias, welcome to our live stream. I don't know if you were there before. I don't recognize the name, but hopefully I'll see you next Monday. For next week, we're going to be doing a session on how to embed YouTube videos, how to embed Instagram videos and TikTok videos um, inside the Caspia data page. So if you're building an application that has to deal with, that deals with videos and want to learn how to bring those videos over to the Caspia data page, we're going to learn how to do that. And I'm also going to show you how to modify some things as well. Funny, funny enough, I don't even have a TikTok account, so I'll have to create a TikTok account just to show you how to do that. Um, I have, obviously, I'm using YouTube and Instagram, but no TikTok. So for tomorrow's or for next week's live stream, I'll have to have a uh, TikTok account created. Well, maybe actually. I'll see. I'll see if I need to. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a good rest of the week. Have a good Monday. And I hope to see you next week for our video related content that we'll be doing. I appreciate your time as always. Have a good week. I will end the session now. I'll keep the chat going if you have any last minute questions. But I will close the live stream. Thanks and have a good day. Bye bye.